dramatization. After a car wreck, you may have to fight with a highly trained insurance company rep whose job is to knock your damaged claim down and out. It's a bad idea to enter the ring alone against a trained boxer, and it could be a bad idea to fight against a big insurance company by yourself. When the bell rings, attorney Dennis Sperling will be there to fight for your rights. If you've been seriously injured in a car wreck, call me, attorney Dennis Sperling, at 866-529-2444. That's 866-529-2444. Dramatization. Bad drivers cause car wrecks. Not paying attention to the road, operating electronic devices, and drinking while driving can lead to serious injuries. If you've been the victim of a bad driver, a trial lawyer may be able to help you recover money to pay your medical bills, reimburse you for lost wages, and compensate you for the pain caused by your injuries. If you, your friends, or family have been injured in a car wreck, contact me, Attorney Dennis Sperling, toll free, 866-529-2444. I'm here to help. Hi, my name is Dennis Berlin. I'm not a lawyer, but my dad is. Yeah. If you've been hurt in a car accident, then call my daddy. No need to scream and yell like a little kid. Yeah, I know you're lying. My daddy will fight for your rights. Yeah, fight for your rights. If you've been involved in a car accident, call my daddy return in Dennis Berlin. Hello, I'm attorney Dennis Sperling. If you've been injured in a car wreck, call me at 713-229-0770. Call my daddy, daughter, daddy. Hi my, Hi, my name is Stephanie, and these are my two adorable and handsome sons. And that is my ex-husband, attorney Dennis Sperling. He practices personal injury law and will be more than happy to help you with claims arising from automobile accidents. He doesn't get paid unless you get paid. And as we first wives know, the more our ex-husbands get paid, the more we get paid. So let me help him help you. Call Mr. <laughs> Sperling at 713-229-0770. I'm going to visit Dr. Kelly. The shot takes a lot. I'm on my way to visit a therapist. And this is my opinion. They bash men. I was heading to a client and they just hit me. We're going to go to a breast cancer run. I was trying to keep up with daddy. No, you just stayed playing with the grass on the side of the road. I know that my health is imperative to the happiness of my boys. Really, at this point, I want to be a better father.
pimps running around here running amok, all these son husbands. It ain't just these single mothers' faults. Happy wife, no. Happy life. Y'all heard that before. That's the most simplest thing you can hear say. Yeah. Welcome to Simp University. Uh huh. That's right. We got an all star lineup. Yeah. We got Dr. Um, 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 uh, Simp Jackson on the drums. Oh, Johnson. Yeah. We got Dr. Boogity 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 Voice Watkins on the tambourines. We got Derek. The Janky Jack Jackson singing back up. And this is the Simp Academy, baby. Shake it for a simp. Shake it for a simp. Uh huh. Shake it for a simp. Shake it for a simp. Uh huh. She just want that money anyway. She just want it. He don't give a fuck. He gon' pay. So he gon' pay it, baby. Shake it for a simp. Shake it for a simp. Uh huh. Shake it for a simp. Shake it for a simp. Uh huh. She just want that money anyway. He don't care. He don't give a fuck. He gon' pay. That's it. Shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, uh Worth the pimp, see, I walk with a limp, uh, uh This is for the donation niggas who got food Been a decade running and still no school and no class You keep asking for more cash yeah. Academy growing, pucker up and kiss ass These doctor, imposter, homie, you check the roster Black women panda, sounds like you a scammer Yeah we lace them up like them Chuck Tennis. Chuck Tennis. We don't love these hoes. They screaming, fuck Dennis. Fuck Dennis. We holding court. Ain't no love in it. Rather be the judge in it. Just as fuck you fuck niggas. Check game. Your mama gave you niggas all a simp chip. Now you simping A1 game all on this simp shit. High degree having nigga talking this trick shit. What you gonna be teaching at that school, nigga? Pimp shit? This is for the simps at the academies Listen to your mama play Fuck what your daddy say Yeah, 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 yeah Nigga, you a simp Yeah, simp, simp Nigga, you a simp Yeah This is for the simps at the academies Listen to your mama play Fuck what your daddy say Yeah, 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 yeah Nigga, you a simp Yeah my nigga, you a simp, yeah. Shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, uh -huh. Shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, uh -huh. She just want that money anyway, she just want it. He don't give a fuck, he gon' pay, so he gon' pay it, baby. Shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, uh -huh. Shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, uh -huh. She just want that money anyway, she don't just care. Want it. Yeah. He don't give a fuck, he gon' pay. It, baby. You niggas is soft as Wonder Bread, baby. You worse than King Kong trying to save mayonnaise, man. Sipping is like Kool-Aid. And you niggas add extra sugar, sugar. Cause you sipping niggas never had that booger, booger. How can a rotten bitch raise a forgotten trick that turned into a switch hitter? You more concerned with alphabets and crayon colors. I'm not that nigga, and I'm definitely not that brother. So when the kingdom falls, and the she heathen no longer pick up your call, and when we leave you simps swinging from these salty balls, let's believe I got my attorney named Dennis Sperling on speed dial, and in the meanwhile, while simping ain't in my pimping, do not shake shit for me, baby. But you can uh, shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, shake it for a shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, shake it, shake it. She just want that money anyway. She just want that money. He don't give a fuck. He gon' pay. He gon' pay it, baby. Now shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, shake it, shake it, shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, shake it, shake it. She just want that money anyway. She just want the brain. He don't give a fuck. He gon' pay. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the broadcast. My name is Dennis Sperling. I'm a podcaster. I'm a dad. Uh, I'm an attorney. I'm an author. I'm a lot of things, man. One thing I am not 
is I am not a relationship guru. I do not give relationship advice. Let me say that again. I do not give relationship advice. And the reason I don't give relationship advice is because I'm not you. Um, Even with my own sons, I tell them what to look out for. I tell them things that they should be hesitant of. Uh, Women they should be wary of. Definitely, I tell them women they should probably steer clear of. But here's the thing. Uh, They're going to choose what they want to do, and they're going to do what they want to do anyway. All I can do is say, hey, man, this is your likely outcome. Nevertheless, one thing I can say for sure is you should never take relationship advice from simps. And that's pretty much what we're going to be talking about tonight. Nevertheless, uh, I want to first thank everybody in the chat room. Big shout out to all my family and folks. I hope you all have joined the Blizzard King channel. Uh, the other thing is uh, co-parenting with the Spurlings is coming up Thursday again. I'm on a one-man mission to do a take back Thursdays. Big shout out to Crimson Cure. Big shout out to my man O'Shea Duke Jackson, man. I think, uh, you know, he's probably one of the only ones on the bigger channels, one of the old school guys who've been around the Manosphere for years who uh, basically said, you know what, I'm going to help you out with this, man. And I I like O'Shea, man. O'Shea was there with me when I was trying to help defend Kevin Samuels. He was the one to put up his own money to, uh, you know, help the family get through that three or four week time period when they had to transition uh, to try to, uh, you know, get access to uh, Kevin Samuels' funds. O'Shea's a stand-up dude, man. I don't give, I don't care what y'all said about him, man. He was there. He, he was there helping Kevin Samuels in the cut right there with me behind the scenes, not taking any credit. So big shout out to O'Shea. And he just so happened, I believe, did a um, a review on one of the shows, uh, Co-Parenting with his brother. So y'all make sure y'all check that out. Again, man, when I grew up, it was Thursday night, it was Black Night. Uh, it was Take Back Thursdays, man. We, uh, you know, we used to be able to sit in front of the TV and watch Cosby. We used to be able to uh, watch uh, a different world. So, you know, man, we, we it, it was a good image to have, especially in that time period in the 80s and 90s when there's so much violence and so much negativity about black folks. We were able to sit there and just enjoy, you know, some positivity about our own people. And that was cool, man. So what I'm trying to do with co-parenting with the Spurlings, you know, me and my ex-wife, we may argue. We may not agree, but we're doing what we're doing for the best interest of the children. And, you know, like I said before, you may not like me. You may hate me. You may call me a misogynist. Uh, some of you ladies may not like me. You, you may say, I hate black women. I don't care what you say. Bottom line is I make black women look good on my TV show. I make them sound articulate, well-spoken, well-taken care of, um, you know, law-abiding. And, and, you know, that's good for our image. So please continue to hate me. Hate me all you can. Don't make me do the hate me dance again. I, I will go to <laughs> hate me as much as you can, baby. Because the more you hate me, the more you feed me. That said, as you guys see, uh, I have my cash app scrolling across the bottom of the screen. Why? Because I recently learned, well, I kind of knew it, and I was okay with it at first until y'all start paying me some real money. <laughs> So y'all start to these cash apps and to the super chats and and whatnot start becoming some real money. Um, And I said, hmm, I don't want Google taking 30 percent of the money you guys donate to me. And so what I did was I said, look, um, I'm going to get my folks, the people who follow me to uh, contribute to me directly because it makes no sense for me to, you know, for every thousand dollars I make, let's say Google takes 300. That just ain't cool, man. I, I just, I'm just, you know, I, I, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to put uh, my pay, pay, pay for time, pay me for my time deal. You guys know what the, you guys who've been here, you know what the deal is. Uh, I just am not just, I'm just not going to go for that. You know what I mean? And we'll see how this works because I feel like I can work less and do more you know, when I'm not tired, if you guys pay me directly. So my cash app, when you guys get to the point, you feel like you've learned something or something has touched you in a special way, man, go ahead and, and pay me for my time uh, using cash app. That said, uh, big shout out. Let me see if anybody's contributed thus far. 
I want to get well, nothing yet, but that's all right. We'll get there. Big shout out to everybody who uh will contribute to the cash app and so on and so forth. But uh nevertheless, um, yeah, so that's where I'm at. Again, make sure you check out co-parenting with the Sperlings. Uh and uh, you know, when the time hits, you feeling good. Bam, go ahead and make that uh pay me for my time. It will be a call. We'll we'll pass the collection plate around a little later on. But right now, let me just go ahead and get warmed up. They call me the Blizzard King for a reason. Okay. Um because you know they call me the Blizzard King. I'm going to okay. You know, when when it's time when the words need to be spoken, when it's time for somebody to speak the truth, I'm gonna speak the truth. And it really doesn't matter who it is. I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm not trying to degrade anybody, but the truth needs to be told because the one thing that black folks don't need is another is more scam artists and liars and con artists leading them on, uh, leading them down the wrong path, especially black men. And so, you know, when I look at this situation involving Mr. Steve Harvey, and I know y'all like Steve Harvey, and you know, he's a member of a prominent uh, a, a Greek letter alphabet uh, fraternity. Got some great guy, great guys. Shout out to the to, to the members of the brothers of Omega Sci Fi. I'm not holding you all responsible. This is definitely not an attack on anybody, fraternity, group, organization, uh, whatever like that. Because we got simp's everywhere. We got simp's in the pulpit, simp's in the White House. We got simp's in 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 Congress. We got simp's everywhere. You understand what I'm saying? We got simp's in my fraternity, your fraternity, their sorority, it, 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 pimps in prison, pimps in, in, in everywhere, uh, simps everywhere. And what we need to not do as young men, as men in general, is take advice from simps, okay? And that's where we at right now. Now, how do we know this man is a simp? What I want you to do, I've uh, scoured the internets, and I want y'all to listen to this. Y'all let me know if you can hear this. I'm going to play this. Let me know if you can hear this. I'm going to try to make it as loud as I possibly can, loud as it possibly can go. Big shout out to my man, Jerome Legions. Listen to this and let me know if you guys can hear this. Okay? Let me know if you can Steve hear Harvey. this. Okay? See, they do simp catalog of Steve Harvey. And big shout out to my man. See, they do kill me. That's what's wrong with this generation today. These young boys today, what do she bring to the table? The hell you mean, man? What do your ass bring to the table? You got a woman that can come to the table that can make another you. That's your boy. What else she need to slide up to the table with? Mm -hmm. What about your job? What happened to men who were supposed to be responsible? Do you know that it's our job to take care of a woman and some children to have a family? That's our damn job. Marriage is not 50-50. It has never been 50-50. It will never be 50-50. I'm going to hold up a card, and I'm going to show you what marriage is. Okay, marriage is, is 85-15. <laughs> 85 to the woman and 15 to the man. And let me explain something to you. The re reason a woman is in charge of the house is because they know more about it. They know. Can y'all hear this? Let me know if you guys can hear this. Let me know. Hit the number one button if you can hear. Shout out to the ranch mob, too, man. Shout out to everybody who came through kids schedule they know your schedule mm -hmm. they know the bills they know where everybody goes they take care of vacations they they run everything in the house because they care about everything you would do <laughs> you just know about your job you don't know that now. you don't know that now I mean, yes. what I'm going to yes. is yes. the man who totally discredits you know men and fatherhood i mean if that ain't simping i mean that is simping beyond any degree so why then would you take any advice from this man that's the question that you have to ask yourself now um why are we even talking about steve harvey in the first place well recently there's been some allegations that uh his beautiful lovely magnificent lovely lady of a wife has uh you know allegedly done some things that she shouldn't have done with somebody she shouldn't have done them with. And so he's in the news. Apparently there's some more issues where a tweet went out and, you know, he allegedly offended some people who are in his industry by, you know, asking for a call for the fans, his fans to make a statement as to uh, who's funny and who's not as far as comedians. Uh, 
And on top of that, you know, uh, his family, his the children of his first and second wife are uh, apparently saying some things about him that are inappropriate. And he kind of, he dealt with that too. I actually, I'll pull that up because, you know, I guess that's important too. So we can kind of, it, it's so bad that he had to, he had to deal with it. Now, you know, uh, I'm going to hit this from a different direction, man. I I, I don't, uh, I just don't follow what everybody else does because, you know, I, I want y'all to learn something. So I want you guys to actually walk away with something. Let me see if I can pull up. And the reason that I'm not using, um, I'm not putting it up on the screen right now is because, you know, as you guys know, uh, YouTube has been on a tear and they are trying to demonetize people's channels for using uh reusing video footage you see what i'm saying so i'm trying to stay away from that and i don't want to get caught up into that trap they already gunning for me anyway and at some point i will get uh i will get that hammer but you know i'm still your uncle d baby and then, you know as long as i get my message out it gets out but uh, i want you to hear him addressing this and this is actually from uh the young woman tasha k I believe uh, her channel, but she has this posted up on Facebook. Uh, let me know if you guys can. Uh, let me know if you can hear this. I'll try to play it real quick. So basically, he's in front of some stage somewhere saying. I don't know what uh, what y'all doing, but basically, but we're fine, which is a sure sign that everything is not fine. Anytime you feel the need to go out and address something publicly like that, it can't be ignored to the point where you got to address it. We find something else to do, cause we fine. Lord have mercy, man. I sure wish I could cuss though. You know, cause sometimes you just wanna you wanna respond. But I ain't got no time for rumor and gossip, man. God been good to me. I'm still shining. I appreciate y'all coming. Uh, listen. So now you kind of got to get the gist. So he put himself in the news. Him and his family, him and his family put himself in the news. It is what it is. Here's the thing. Uh, you know, so, you know, <laughs> this is the man who wrote the book. Men are for what, what? What was it called? Uh, come on, what is it? Uh, talk like a, uh, act like a, uh, 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 act like a lady, think like a man. Giving all these women advice, he's always constantly giving advice to people on the internet. Uh, people, anybody who'll listen. Um, my thing is, you know, Mr. Harvey should have listened to his own children because his children were against him marrying uh, Marjorie. Uh, Harvey, who is now his third wife, and it appears, just as the outsider looking in, now he has buyer's remorse 15 years later. If you look at Tasha Kay's interview with Jimmy Towns Shed, I believe that was his name, that was Marjorie's first husband. This dude was a drug kingpin, allegedly, and that's why he went to jail. And she stayed with him, possibly, could have possibly known about his activities, and she stayed with him. That lets you know the caliber of woman that he's dealing with, okay? Now, as far as Marjorie, you know, this woman is, is a street chick. She used to dealing with street dudes. So what does that tell you? That tells you she got that good game. Somebody type good game in the chat room. <laughs> Somebody type good game in the chat room. Marjorie got good game. You feel me? And um, she calculated. It's easy to tell that she definitely calculated this relationship. Um, calculated her odds of winning in this relationship and uh and, and and at this point you know she's definitely the problem um it's going to be interesting to see how their daughter lori harvey who is not his biological daughter actually turns out now the reality and the reason she has his last name is because mom miss marjorie uh third wife convinced steve harvey to adopt him kids what does that say, man? It's just a whole lot. See, the reality is um, Steve Harvey is not the guy you want to take relationship advice from, period. Okay? This guy married a whore. 
okay? A whore he was doing on the side because he's a lame. And let me tell you something else. The man admitted that he married this woman with no prenuptial agreement. Yeah, the man who's now worth $200 million, who lost hundred, who lost millions of dollars in his first divorce, married, this, you still didn't learn. And he married this woman and has no prenuptial agreement. Think about that. So, you know, uh, when I look at that, man, um, you know, if you keep playing the same game and losing, and you know you're going to lose, that says a lot about you. What it says to me, and in colloquial terms, is Steve Harvey is a super simp. And, you know, for all his bad advice, you know, Steve's kids saw right through Marjorie, right through her. But Steve fell into the same trap he's preaching about. And this woman is playing the long game. I knew Steve was a fool uh, many times over, especially when he adopted them old-ass children of hers. And here's the cold part about it. Apparently, some of the children are angry, his, old, his, his, his older children, by his first wife and his second wife. His second wife has a son. I believe his first, first wife had some girls with him. You know, and he's apparently treating those children or treating his Marjorie's children better than he treating his own kids. And you never treat your biological children less than uh, in, in a lesser manner than you treat your own kids. Uh, but it just lets you know that, that, that Marjorie wears the pants. You see? Now, it's my understanding that early on, Steve was always close with his biological children. And uh, yeah, he used to talk about their mom and, and whatnot. Um, you know, but but it's my understanding he was close with them. You see, as I said earlier, most of his children from his first wife, that's where most of the kids from. His youngest son is from his second wife. And that's the one that he allegedly left uh, for Marjorie or was having allegedly having an affair. I mean, I don't know, but, you know, allegedly. Um, and uh, and all they doing apparently is spending up his money. OK, but it's my understanding that, you know, Steve, he taught his biological children to work hard for what they want, which is a good thing. He just wasn't as successful at life and didn't have as much money when he was raising them. Uh, the older ones, I mean. And so he couldn't give them as much as he's given Lori and her brother, who aren't his biological children. But still, as an outsider looking in, it's like these kids who 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 Margie brought to the family, they belong to this thug, and they're getting better treatment than us. But see, the problem is, fam, because this man is a sucker and a simp, he's adopted these kids. So if he ever gets a divorce... He's going to have to pay, they, for not hell, I think they're over the age 18, but they're part of his estate. So if he dies, those kids get to fight his biological children over the money that he earned. Now, the thing I want you guys to understand, and we're going to segue, and this may or may not apply to uh, Steve Harvey, but only a very weak man abandons his children for a woman. That's a wicked man. Somebody type, Wicked man in the chat room. And it happens all the time. Okay? And as far as Steve Harvey kids, they know the history of their father. Huh? He had he was telling people years ago that he was vagina whooped with the pee. That's what Steve is. Steve failed to act like a man who has money. Women like Marjorie and their kids come a dime a dozen. And when you got millions in your name, you got to be careful who you're dealing with. Especially when we're dealing with a society full of women who think like prostitutes. That's how they think. And then you messed around and married one. She's been plotting on, on, on becoming the next uh, Chris Kardashian. You know, using her daughter to level up like Kim. That's what it looked like to me. And see, fellas, uh, and I want y'all to hear me out on this, man. A big mistake that a lot of men make when dating single mothers is they try to win the affection of her children, okay? Especially when his own children 
don't really like him. Now, that has a lot of reasons behind that, okay? Sometimes those mothers from those first set of children turn you against uh, your father, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. But in the meantime, man, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, y'all know what y'all got to do, man. And, and look, we're going to talk about Jesus tonight. You know, I, I know it's the Internet, and some of y'all are atheists, and some of y'all don't believe in God, but that's what we do here, man. And if you don't like it, that's cool. Uh, just play along, but we'll be right back. Y'all do what you got to do. Welcome back to the broadcast. My, I just had a little unwanted guest show up. Say what's up to everybody. I got a little unwanted guest. He popped up. He likes to uh, come jump up on my lap when I'm doing my broadcast. What's up? This is Buddy. This is uh, my youngest son's cat. I decided to, you know, give him give him a little responsibility. And oftentimes, when you give kids pets, puppies, kittens, dogs. Uh, birds, whatever, it, it forces them to take responsibility over something, uh, a life, and then you can hold them to it. So he has to get up and feed this dude to make sure he's pooping in his kitty litter and, and so on and so forth. So uh, he, but he apparently, he likes to interrupt. Okay, he, 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 he really enjoys interrupting these broadcasts and pushing these buttons. But uh, anyway, we're going we gonna to send Buddy on. Buddy, time to roll. Anything you want to say? Yeah, I want to give a shout out to everybody in Fifth Ward, man. This is Buddy, man. Fifth Ward all the way, baby. I'm living my best life out here in the burbs with Uncle D. Blizzard King for life, fool. <laughs> anyway, man, let me get this dude up out here, man. Look, go, 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 go find your mama, man. Come on, eat. Here you go. Get, get, get your cat. Get your cat. There it is. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody, some, somebody type buddy. <laughs> buddy in the chat room, man. Buddy in the chat room, man. But anyway, yeah, he comes and he'll, he'll probably run his little self back on up here. And uh, he jumps just clean up on my shoulder. I'm just sitting here trying to work. I was doing a deposition and Buddy just jumped clean up. I'm, I'm in the, he jumped clean up on my shoulder. But all the other lawyers, they had jokes. Uh, so you have a little unwanted company there, huh, Mr. Spurley? Anyway, man, but uh, let's go ahead and get this thing cracking again. So look, fam, and brothers, and I want y'all to hear me. Never take relationship advice from simps, okay? And a big mistake that a lot of men make when you're dating single mothers is you trying to win the affection of her children, especially when... Listen, especially when you don't have the best relationship with your own children. Okay, let's let's lay this down. It should never be any man's concern whether or not if a woman's kids that ain't his don't like him. Okay, especially if he's paying for the house they're living in. I'm going to tell you now, I tell my kids all the time, I don't care if you don't like me, I'm not your friend. You don't have to love me. I'm your father. And that's to my biological children. Now, of course, I love my children, but I don't care if they don't like me. And that's something that some of you all may not register, but that's some real father stuff right there. You see what I'm saying? Respect is the most important thing. And controlling this house and controlling my home and controlling, keeping the chaos down is what my job is around here, keeping this thing in order. You ain't got to like me, but make sure that room is clean. You don't have to like me, but take your butt to bed on time. You don't have to like me, but go on out there and do your homework and make sure your chores are done. You see? Now, the thing you got to understand about women, and it's been my experience, and many of you may have had this, uh, stepmothers drive wedges between the father and his kids. You guys who've read my books, you guys who've read Rules to Live By, How to Maintain Peace of Mind and Happiness, all of that is up in there. I know that's some of y'all's experience and stepmother don't necessarily mean a woman that your mom, that your dad is married to. It can also mean 
a, 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 a woman that your dad is dating seriously. Some of y'all got dads with longtime girlfriends, and they draw wedges between fathers and his children, right? Y'all know that. You see it happening, okay? You see it happening all the time. And that caused a lot of animosity between fathers, uh-huh, because they want to make sure that they are a priority, period. And if the woman has kids, she's going to find ways to manipulate that man to help take care of her kids as well. Oftentimes by guilting him for taking care of his own kids, by making it seem like he's doing it for them because he wants his ex back. You understand what I'm saying? They'll throw that in. Women are master manipulators, man. And, and if you a simp, you're going to fall for it. That's why you don't take advice from simps. You see, even when kids aren't involved, women usually attempt to try to run your friends away as well. Why? Because they don't want to have, they don't want anybody else to have your influence over you because they want your attention. They want all these different things. And hey, let me give you something else, man. To be honest, oftentimes men will stray away from the old woman to the new woman, even if the old woman has kids, because if we're going to be honest, it's about sex. It's about attention. It's about the services that she, uh, she provides. And if she giving respect and them kids are giving respect, it's not going to be hard for that man to walk away from his old kids into this woman's life and her new kids. OK, see, once a man is no longer getting sex from a woman, he's not getting attention. He's not getting respect. He's not getting services from this woman. You know, they leave they, the average man leave that kid behind. There's a study that came out that said. About eight years after a man separates from a woman, he pretty much doesn't have anything to do with the kids. So your mom and dad divorced by when you were four or five years old. By the time you're 12 or 13, you barely see your daddy. We all know that's true. We all know that's true. It happens all the time. He might come around every now and then, but he, that's, that's what it takes about eight years. Okay? So what happens in that new household when that woman is giving him sex, attention, and respect and providing him the services? They live with the Harvey. You see? They live with Mr. Harvey. They live with, 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 with Steve Harvey. So the family naturally is they're going to blend, you see? And, 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 and his new wife, if she planned it right, she's going to do what she's supposed to do and bring them kids in line. You see? It's always the objective of the stepmom to put her children in front. And that's why he wanted Harvey to go ahead and, uh, Steve Harvey to go ahead and adopt her kids. No woman, okay, can make a strong man with integrity alienate his child or his children. He did that because he's a simp. And this is the type of person that y'all listening to. And we got plenty of these dudes in the African-American community. Hell, we got plenty of them in all communities here in the United States because along with having... A, uh, a, a prostitute mentality amongst the women, we got a simp mentality amongst the men, okay? What I'm telling you fellas is integrity requires that your biological children need to be favored before anybody else's children, including your stepchildren. Your biological children hold your legacy. They're passing your genes down. That is your genetic legacy, pushing you forward into the future, into the next generation. I tell my children all the time, you are me. So when I see you, I see me. That's why I will do for you what I would do for myself. It makes no sense to deprive you because depriving you deprives myself. If you want to do nice gestures for these children, that's fine. But it shouldn't overshadow what is your God-given responsibility as the biological father of these kids that you brought forth in the world.
They're giving a rundown 304 and her kids, the keys to the kingdom, and throwing your own kids to the side. That's a sucker-ass simp move, fam. And you need to understand that. And a lot of you dudes are willing to do that. Even my passport, bros, when you go overseas. Let's keep it 100. The vast majority of them broads overseas that you're dealing with got kids. Let's keep it 100. They got kids. They have a higher out of wedlock birth rate in Colombia and the Dominican Republic than they have right here in the United States. That's the best kept secret of the passport bros. And you will have a tendency to put them kids first, especially if you got kids out here and the mama didn't treat you right. Let's keep it 100. I love you. Uncle D love you. I'm going to tell you the truth. It's late at night. It's just up here. It's just us out here. Okay. Now, that Marjorie chick, she had plenty of opportunity uh, 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 to get with uh, and take, uh, you know, uh, any uh, any opportunity that Steve Harvey offered her. It wasn't until, you know, she got ran through and, and he was a certified millionaire that she decided to go ahead and go with him. And he needed to be shamed of himself. Cheating on us, allegedly cheating on his second wife with this woman. But here's the thing, and I want y'all to understand something. If you see a fool bump his head, have you ever heard that old statement? If you see a fool bump his head, huh? Can't blame Marjorie for everything. It's the circumstances. The first wife opened the door. The second wife opened the door. These previous wives, for whatever reason, decided to bash Steve Harvey, listen, I want you ladies to listen. I know there's a couple of ladies in here. Listen, I'm going to give you some good game. These first and second wives decided to bash Steve Harvey. Okay? And that obviously made him rather unfavorable with his first set of kids and his second set of kids from his second wife. So who we going to blame for opening that opportunity? You got to blame the mothers. So now let's look at the situation. You got a man who get bashed by his first wife and her children are looking at him low key like he crazy. Like he ain't, he ain't spit. The second wife, she mad because he cheated on her with this Marjorie chick. So she talking bad about him. So she was, so the kids, is, so the son is mad. So all the kids mad at him. And so now you got Lori Harvey. Who is and, and her little brother, who is Marjorie's children, they over there at giving this man respect. Huh? They giving him attention. You understand what I'm saying? So he gonna naturally get, gravitate to them. Look, some children will come into your life and they will cherish you, they will honor you, they will respect you uh, more than your own biological kids will. Huh? And a lot of those kids treat you, those biological children, biological children treat you that way. Why? Because they program to feel entitled. And that comes from their mamas. <clears throat> it, it, it's become a problem for this first set of children now, though. You see? <clears throat> but they got to blame their mamas for that. That's why you always want to facilitate a good relationship with, um, give me a minute, y'all. Hold on one minute. I had to take a little sip of this water. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. But what I was saying was, um, <clears throat> that's why, because most men want respect and appreciation, that's why it's important for women to, um, <clears throat> it's important for women to make sure they foster a good relationship with the fathers. Because when he move on, you know, even though his 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 um, <clears throat> if his stepkids are treating him good and his blood kids are not, I'm not surprised that he favors them. You understand what I'm saying? And you can't um, you, you, if you can't listen and and show respect, you're not gonna get access to that man's success. Period. That's how men are. Most men are like that anyway. They share with the ones who treat them well. You see, <clears throat> and um 
Now, I'm assuming that they didn't live in poverty when they were children, and I think that would be terrible if that was the case, but I don't think that was the case. He just didn't have two, three hundred million dollars. He had the millions, but he didn't have it like he have it now. You understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> now, um, that said, I'm not mad that Marjorie played Steve because he's a simp, period. It, it just is what it is. She's a ratchet gold digger who, who found a simp and played him, right? <clears throat> and if a man treats his stepchildren better than his own kids, that says a lot about his character under whatever circumstances, you see? And um, I bet all of them turn on Steve after a while. Now, generally speaking, because of because men typically make more money the older they get, <clears throat> and uh, they choose better wives, they get better opportunities, more money comes. The second family usually gets better treatment financially. He's going to have more time on his hand. He got more money. And so that's kind of what happened. Now, the cold part about it, and this is a trap you brothers got to avoid, <clears throat> when you do get that second, second family, a lot of times fathers, okay, they'll taunt those moms from the first relationships. Okay, yeah, you know, you going on vacation and and you make sure you tell everybody who's her friend that you going on vacation with your new wife to a place that your old wife wanted to go. You understand? That's just you just taunting it. You 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 broadcasting all that you doing. You saying stuff like, "Yeah, man, it's the best woman I ever been with. Man, I ain't never met no woman." And, and you know <clears throat> that her friends and your children follow your little social media page. You see what I'm saying? So you taunting this woman. You understand? And y'all know it's a lot of dudes out there to do that. And this has a very, this is, has a, a devastating effect, <laughs> a devastating <clears throat> effect on the kids. You see, it, it has a bad effect on their mind and their heart because they love their mama and they only, they want to be down with their mom. They love their dad, but it's like dad is wrong. You know what I'm saying? So they don't show you respect. And then you don't come around. And so now your absence is a sign of abandonment. They disrespect you because they mad at how your mom, their mom is getting treated. And you don't like the way they treating you. So you stop coming around. And then that's a sign of a, a sign of abandonment. And what's left? The new mom wins. The new kids win. <clears throat> it's, it's a hell of a circle. You know, it's a cycle. And then you got to look at situations. You got to look at this young girl, Lori Harvey. Let's, let's analyze this situation. She gets the benefit, she reaps the benefit and rewards of having a successful multimillionaire popular stepdad. She gets to date all the, the, the star athletes and ball out because they want to be cool with her. You see what I mean? She even get her name changed to Harvey. And she gets all the benefits of Steve Harvey's being Steve Hardy's uh, <laughs> child without his ugly ass face. You understand what I'm saying? The reason Steve Harvey's twin daughters haven't been pushed to the front, Google them. Go take a look at them. Look at Steve Harvey's daughters. It's not about colorism. Look at them. They look just like him, okay? They look just like Steve Harvey, and that's one of the reasons why they haven't been pushed to the front. You hate me if you want to. I'm just speaking honest, all right? Devin said, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Y'all hit the number one button. Y'all make sure you do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. We got something special tonight. I'm going I'm to learn you something tonight, but y'all do what you got to do. We'll be right back. Good Lord,
out to the broadcast. Let me make sure I give a big shout out to all my guys who contributed to the Cash App. Big shout out to my man Jerome Legions. Thank you so much. My man Expansion Wiring Technologies. Thank you so much. Boogie, I, th I think that uh, bougie. <laughs> I think Boo Patrick. Thank you, Brent Turner, my man from D Town, David Fodakin, and also Cody Marshall. Big shout out to you guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all, man. Make sure if you learn something, I want you to show me you appreciate me. Not even appreciation. Hell, pay me for my time. But uh, we ain't finished it yet. I'm telling you, I'm gonna wrap this all up, man. I'm gonna land this helicopter right in your backyard. All right, and you're gonna be like, damn. All right, but here's the thing, and I want y'all to listen. Mothers <clears throat> who help destroy the relationship with their fathers, the fathers of their children, they also play a part, okay? When the father moves on, if the new wife plays her cards right and she has kids, she makes her kids obey the new husband, right? And they stroke his ego, okay? They, they, they treat him the right way, and he end up loving those kids more than he loves his old kids. Now, look, some of y'all been watching my TV show. Somebody type wrote co-parenting with the Sprellings in. Somebody type co-parenting with the, with, with the Sprellings in the chat room. One thing you will see, <clears throat> my ex-wife, she played me close, man. I mean, I'm telling you, if I was a wide receiver, man, she, she going man to man the whole field. She always was wondering what I was doing, popping up at my house because them kids was little. She didn't want some other woman to come in and it, with her kids to come in and take all that attention away, all that money and resources that she was receiving, because she was getting gifts too. Don't get it twisted. My ex-wife was getting, and y'all going to see more of that in this next eight uh, episodes coming up. She gets all kind of gifts, trips, cars, wardrobe, these sort of things. I'm trying to keep her happy so that she lets me see my kids, and she trying to keep this thing going, and she playing me tight, even though I'm divorced from her, it's her way of keeping other people out of my life. You see what I'm saying? So she always made sure the boys was very respectful of, of dad. She never talked bad about me in front of the boys. You understand? So whatever you may say about my ex-wife, she played the game smart. You understand what I'm talking about? And guess what? She ended up winning because now you got these two diamonds of young men that are going to go on to be doctors and, and a, a lawyer and a surgeon. You see what I'm saying? So it's a win-win situation. So that's the smart way to do it. My ex-wife never destroyed the relationship <clears throat> that uh, I had with my sons. Just intelligent. Just, just good intelligence. That said, when you got these bitter ex-wives and these bitter baby mamas, huh? Huh? And they all up in the relationship with the kids, you know, talking bad about the daddy. Your daddy ain't this. Eventually, those kids are going to inherit some of that. You see? They're going to inherit some of those bad feelings, and they're going to go relay that to dad. You understand? And that's going to drive a wedge between dad and those kids. So later on, when dad gets his stuff together, or when he come up, start making money, he's going to remember that. It was one thing when mom was the problem. It's another thing when the kids are disrespectful. They don't call on his birthday. They don't write him cards. It was every look. I'm divorced. I got Father's Day cards, birthday gifts, Christmas Christmas gifts every year. My my ex wife made sure my sons did that, and in return on Valentine's Day, her birthday, I made sure they showed up at her front door with flowers and so on and so forth. So we both was playing each other, and that's good game. You see, <clears throat> you got to understand something. This is why, ladies, you always nurture the kid's relationship with their fathers. That way he'll keep spending money on them. Men, men gonna spend money where their heart is. You understand? Look, your wallet and your heart are attached. <laughs> you understand me? Your wallet and your heart are attached as a man, especially when it comes to your kid. Smart women know that. You see? Huh? Even if you're not with the man, even if you can't stand them, ladies, you don't want that man to discard those children. And you damn sure don't want no other kids to slip into his heart and become closer to him. That's what you see happen because we are all recovering simps. Now you have some advanced level simps, some level five simps, 
like Steve Harvey, but you get opened up. You let these ex-wives and these bitter baby mamas become the destroyers of family ties because of their bitterness and vindictiveness. And that's what you see happening. It ain't no way in hell if my daddy worth two, three hundred million dollars. I'm not going to be dad. What, mom, the mom needs to cultivate. Look, dad, you got to look. Stay close to the money. Somebody type stay close to the money in the chat room. <laughs> you understand me? Somebody type stay close to the money in the chat room. Okay, that's the woman's fault. Now, again, <clears throat> I'm not letting Steve Harvey off the hook So you, because you should never treat some other group of children as not your biological legacy better than you treat your own. You shouldn't do that. But also, we got to put some blame on that first wife and that second wife for opening the door. Them kids should be catering to that man. You understand? Simple or not. Get some of this, man. Somebody type get some in the chat room. Y'all need to get some of this. Stay close to the money. Let's be wise. Now, here's the other thing. And again, I'm not letting Steve Harvey off the hook. He's living proof that simping ain't the way. You hear me? Steve Harvey is living proof that simping ain't the way. What's going on in his mind? This whole thing is because Steve Harvey still feels like this woman, Marjorie, is doing him a favor. Somebody type doing him a favor in the chat room. Steve Harvey still feels like Marjorie is doing him a favor. She got kids. She was dealing with a D-boy. Steve was the type of guy who always wanted the popular pretty girl, and he couldn't land her. Can't y'all see that? So here come Marjorie comes along and just blows him away. And she, know, she knows it. Steve is, is a rich guy that doesn't understand that women like Marjorie come along a dime a dozen. A man like Steve Harvey worth hundreds of millions of dollars, that's a once in a lifetime deal. But what that tells you is that makes Steve Harvey the definition of a simp. And this is what I want you boys to avoid. He is the definition of a simp. He doesn't know his own value. He's one of the build over backwards for a woman. <clears throat> she, he truly thinks she's better than him. He, he truly thinks she's the prize. When in all objectivity, he's the prize because he's a rarity. And that's part of, that's the problem. Now, that said, praise God. I would like for y'all to uh, understand something. <laughs> and uh, you guys who know my mannerisms and motions, you know where we're about to go. Somebody type praise Moses in the chat room. Somebody type praise Moses in the chat room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's get the microphone up and ready. Take a little sip of water. Uh, let me say this. <clears throat> God hates simps. What? Let me say it again. God, the most high, hates simps. What? Where are you going with this, Uncle D? This whole thing just went left. No, no, no. God hates simps because simping will lead you to your destruction. I said it, and I'm going to tell you why. The Bible gives great examples of men who succumb to their desires for women and put those women over and above their obligations to the Most High. The Bible gives examples of men who left God and fell under the control of women. But your preacher ain't going to tell you that because he himself is a blue pill simp. But if we look at the story of David and Bathsheba, if we look at the story of King Solomon and all his wives and concubines, he still had to go over there and get some of them women he was supposed to stay away from. Look at Adam, who fell from grace because his woman sinned and she convinced him to do what? 
go right along with him. Samson, the strongest man who ever lived, befuddled by a harlot. So what does that tell me? Simping will lead to your destruction and God and lead you astray and away from the path of God. And therefore what? I can conclude that God hates simps. Now, chapter and verse. <laughs> somebody say chapter and verse. You can't just say the Bible says and not give somebody chapter and verse. So let's look at Ecclesiastes. Y'all turn your Bibles to Ecclesiastes 7 and 26. Uncle D, what you talking about? Uh-uh, we're going to talk about it. Because you're going to learn something tonight. I want you to walk away with something substantive. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and 26, it says, I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands. Whoso pleases God shall escape her, escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. What the hell are you talking about? Deep. Well, let's analyze that. And I'm, I'm at Ecclesiastes 7 and 26. Get your Bibles together. Get y'all, just Google it. If you ain't got no Bibles, I know. Some of y'all ain't got no books in your house, but that's all right. You got your cell phone. All right? A woman who's, she snares and nets. And, and I find more bitter than, than death a woman whose heart is a snare and net. She just there to take things. She's not there to give. Her hands are like bands to take things. Right? She constantly taking away from you and what you trying to do. And whoso pleases God shall escape from her. You need to leave these gold diggers alone. That's what that say to me. But guess what? A sinner, a sinner who is strayed from the path that God wants him to be on. In other words, your job is to figure out what it is God wants you to do. And by not submitting to the will of God and doing what he wants you to do, guess what? That, in effect, you sinning. You're not submitting to the will of God. And so what? She's taking you away from your duty. You understand? That's real simple to understand. <clears throat> Ain't it? And if you read that on, you read verse 27 in that same chapter. It says, behold, this I have found, saith the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account. And this is Ecclesiastes 7 and 28. Which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not one man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those I have found not. In other words, you just, <laughs> this is not the nature of women. And that's why, as a man, you have to have control over your house. You see? You can't let women run your house. I don't care what Steve Harvey said. The woman need to run the house. It's never, it's never marriage. It's never 50-50. It's 85-15. The woman is the only one that know what's going on. And I, you sound like a simp. <clears throat> you letting your woman run your house, that's not how it's supposed to be. That's upside down. That's simping. So on one hand, you got the simps who fall in love with these gold diggers. They leading with their wallets. On the other hand, you got the women leading your house. Those are simps. And let me give you something else. All my tricks. Somebody type tricking in the chat room. <laughs> somebody type, hey, somebody type, it ain't tricking if you got it in the chat rooms. Come on, somebody type tricking in the chat room. Let's hear it. For you tricks, tricking. I done did a little tricking too. A uh, little international tricking, a little local tricking, a little nationwide tricking. Somebody type tricking in the chat room. Well, Matthew 7 and 6 addressed that. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under your feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Damn, what does that mean, man? What does that mean? Huh? What that's basically saying is you can't turn a hoe into a housewife, man. You cannot turn a hoe into a housewife. You brothers are so arrogant. Most men are so arrogant. You think you could take this low life broad who's been ran through. <clears throat> you think you can give her respect, put her in a nice house, treat her good, take her to church, put in some nice dresses, get her nails done, put up 
and you think you're gonna change this whore from a to a housewife? No. All you're doing is giving what is sacred to 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 to, uh, to dogs. You just throwing pearls to pigs, which they will trample under their feet and do what? Turn and tear you to pieces. That's what you see happening to this man right now. And we've seen this play out many, many times before. You bring the wrong type of women in your household and into your life, and then you end up what? It tears it apart. We've seen it happen throughout the Bible. Huh? So, so, so what do we learn? You can't turn the hoe into a housewife, and no matter how much tricking you do on these women, they're not going to change, whether it's time, attention, resources. They're not going to change. It's not going to work. They're just going to tear up your life, man, because that's the nature of a whore. She got a ticking time bomb. She got a, a, a thought bomb in her chest, and at some point it's going to explode, and she's going to be back out there on the cock carousel and the rooster roller coaster doing what she do best. Are y'all with me? Have y'all left? I think I've lost a few followers. <laughs> Thank y'all. Since I don't went Jesus on, y'all have ran off. Are you still here? Hello? Let me knock. <laughs> Hello? Are y'all there? Let me know. Hit the number one button if you're still here, fam. Okay? Then let me give you another one that talks about the simping and why God hates simps. When you read Proverbs 21 and 19, it says it's better to live in a desert than with a quarrelsome, nagging wife. What does that mean? Uh, what does that mean? What, what is the effect of that? Huh? Well, what happens if a woman is always arguing with you and yelling at you and shit like that? Now look, you can't put hands on her, okay? You're not putting hands on her, she's just talking shit. What eventually happens when this woman is constantly nagging and talking and nagging and la la la? What happens? Huh? At some point, fellas, you willing to do anything to shut this loud mouth broad up. Just shut up. Huh? And what will you do? You will pay her to shut up. Won't you? You're going to go out there. You would never do this before, but now you out there trying to get a loan so you can buy that $20,000 Birkin bag. Huh? That's what you're doing. So instead of building that business, Instead of putting that extra uh, 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 wing, uh, 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 that extra room on the house, you you spending your money on this woman that you got so you can shut her mouth up. You done separated from your friends. You don't go to your church anymore uh, just to shut her up. And what is she doing? She taking you off of your purpose. So who controls you then? If she can... Blah, 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 blah. Argue with you and nag with you and whatnot. She controls you. And that's why it's better to live in the desert than be with a quarrelsome woman because eventually all that nagging is going to get the best of you. And if she controlling you, then you're not on your purpose. Somebody type on your purpose in the chat room. And your purpose is to do what? Figure out what it is God wants you to do and do that. Not some woman. That's there. Let me give you the rest of this, man. Somebody turn one Timothy, uh, one Timothy nine and thirteen, and we gonna wrap. I know y'all can't take this. It's too much Jesus at night for y'all, man. Y'all, yeah, like I'm turning to Jimmy Swagger or something. No, nah, man, I'm your Uncle D, baby. This is what we talk about late night. <clears throat> when I look at Timothy nine and thirteen, one Timothy nine and thirteen, I'm gonna read it. I also want the woman to dress modestly with decency and propriety, adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothes, but with good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship God. 11 says a woman should learn in quietness and full submission. Okay, this is 1 Timothy 11. A woman should learn in quietness and full submission. 12 says I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man. She must be quiet. Now, I know y'all don't like that, especially you simps and you feminists. I know you, because the queen mother goddess can do no wrong and 
according to, you know, Steve Harvey, the woman is supposed to run the house. But that's not what the Bible says. And that's why I'm telling you that as the man, you're supposed to run the house. You're the authority. You're the moral authority over the house. And God does not like simps. You see? God does not like simps. You may not like me saying that. Go to your Bibles. That's what it says in your Bibles. Now, I think I've made my point. More importantly, I've given you some biblical foundation. I've given you what our ancestors, our ancient ancestors had to say about simping. And you see why Steve Harvey's life is in array. You got a man who was so weak that apparently he cheated on his women. I tell you all the time, don't cheat. Don't open that door. Don't succumb to your physical weaknesses, fellas. Don't let some other woman lure you away from your woman. If it's time for you to get out of the relationship, tell her it's time to go, ain't gonna work, I'm out. But don't leave this woman so you can go run to the arms of another woman. That makes you a simp. It just makes you weak. You puss, you, you, you vagina weak. You pee whooped. You leave a woman because she does not follow your moral authority, because she does not submit and do what you say she's supposed to do as the woman of the house. But you maintain that moral authority. You never think, well, I'm going to just go cheat a little bit with a little broad to just, you know, put a Band-Aid on this relationship. No, be a man. Get out the relationship. Don't cheat because you lose the moral authority. Don't be a simp. And I, I, you ain't never heard nobody tell you that cheating and, and what, now that's simping. Hell, you, it is what it is. Nevertheless, this man is weak. And then he let another woman come in with her children and drive wedges between the children that he has with these other women who he has an obligation to. So that's also weak. That's also simping. And you letting a woman run your house, tell you what to do. Who wears the pants in the family? That ain't what my Bible tells me to do. And so that lets me know that God does not like simps. Simping leads to destruction. So that gives you all that you need, family. And the least I'm telling you to do is don't take relationship advice from these simps. Because all they're going to do is lead you down the path of destruction. It's in your Bible. Nevertheless, praise God. Somebody type hallelujah in the chat room. Uh, we are an hour and 14 minutes into this thing. And uh, I know y'all have learned something because you're still here, which lets me know that it's time for you to pay me for my time. If you have appreciated, if you've learned something, if you got something that surprised you tonight, if you uh, uh, said, damn, I've never saw it like that, or I didn't see it from that perspective, then you need to pay me for my time. That's all I'm asking you to do. I'm not begging. I'm asking you to pay me for my time. And until you do, you're going to go be with Jesus. Hallelujah. The PayPal is on the bottom.
close. I need nine more super chats and I'll be back. We're gonna change it up a little bit. Nine more cash apps and we'll be Bloody back. Blood me me under the blood. Jesus cover me under the blood. Under the blood, me me under the blood. Jesus, you may cover me under the blood. In the morning when me wake up. And the blood that Jesus me take up. And when me feel like me, I go break up. Put the blood from me face just like a makeup. In the morning when me wake up. And the blood that Jesus me take up. Yeah. And when me feel like me heart break up, put the blood on me face just like a makeup. Under the blood. Under the blood. Under the blood. Jesus cover me. Under the blood. Jesus you be cover me. Under the blood. Under the blood me say me. Under the blood me say me. Under the blood. Jesus cover me. Under the blood. Under the blood, me say me under the blood. Jesus, you may cover me under the blood. In the morning when me wake up, and the blood that Jesus me take up. And when me feel like me, I go break up. Put the blood from me face just like a makeup. In the morning when me wake up, and the blood that Jesus me take up. And when me feel like me heart break up. Put the blood from me face just like a makeup. Under the blood. Under the blood. Jesus cover me. Jesus you be cover me. Under the blood, me say me. Under the blood, me say me. Under the blood, Jesus cover me. Under the blood, under the blood, me say me. I'll be alright. I'll be alright. When I make it, when I make it, yeah.
All right, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. We still need five more cash ups to get me over the top, and I'll be back. But uh, nevertheless, man, I want to let you guys know that to join the chat. Join the chat. Come on, if you're in the chat room, you can welcome to come in. Shout out to all my folks over on the Blizzard King page. Everybody's welcome to join in, man. You want to come chop it up with me about taking relationship advice from simps because I mean, hey, it's only so much I can hit in an hour, hour and fifteen minutes. Uh, but nevertheless, man, I want y'all to come through. Let's chop it up if you want to. In the meantime, I got a hot one for you from my man, Big Bass DJ, as always. But look, we need five more cash apps. Y'all come through, man. But y'all need to enjoy this entertainment. This is good entertainment right here, man. Speak to Jesus. Hallelujah. 80% of black women in this day and age, it don't matter how old or young they are, they have a general dislike and hatred for you. Mm. That's your real climate, brother. See, I'm not telling you something that you ain't already felt. I'm telling you something that you know. I think it's more to. I truly think it's more to. I couldn't imagine what it would be like as a black man to to want to fuck these bitches, to want to wife them up and have babies. But the majority of your population, you want a black woman, right? But these hoes is crazy. These hoes really crazy out here. Ooh, like, it's, it's an abundance of you that think that all men are dogs, but you, we all know it means black men. You don't ever roast white men, Mexican men, Indian men, Asian men. You don't ever have nothing bad to say about them. But when we say all men are dogs, you really think it's black men that are dogs. Because the undertone of all relationship conversations is black men ain't shit. Why these black men ain't doing this? I can't bond with y'all, sis. I cannot bond with y'all when you have a general dislike and vitriol and hatred for our male counterpart. Do you not understand how goddamn psychotic that is? Black family left in pieces. You don't talk to me, you speak to Jesus. All that love keep it. Passport, we out, we on the beaches. Sunday service, tell it to the preacher. Yeah, black family left in pieces. You don't talk to me, you speak to Jesus. All that love, keep it. Passport, we out, we on the beaches. Sunday service, tell it to the preacher. She got degrees, educated, a lot of independent talk. All the girlfriends single, ain't nobody get to walk. All the men are at the airport, overseas trip. Wanna fight mid flight, told us all the to least shit. You're lonely and you're desperate. Family used to matter, only black lives. Got you trying to buy some baby batter. Your politics are off while you're fucking up the nation. You can stay on candy land, bitch, I'm off the plantation. The house and the car when the bank account keep. Get your zaddy, ain't nobody gonna replace me. Fuck your PhD, what you eat, I don't shit. Why you think I'm booking fights to get away from you, trick? All the BBLs and the cumbrellas. All the weave thought hoes need to run, fellas. All the baby mama, mamas and the free sluts. We out of here, you can have it, homie, keep up. All the BBLs and the Umbrellas. All the weave dot hoes need to run, fellas. All the baby mama mamas and the freak sluts. We out of here, you can have it, homie, keep up. Black family left in pieces. You don't talk to me, you speak to Jesus. All that love, keep it. Passport, we out, we on the beaches. Sunday service, tell it to the preacher. Yeah. Black family left in pieces. You don't talk to me, you speak to Jesus. All that love, keep it. Passport, we out, we on the beaches. Sunday service, tell it to the preacher. Yeah. Hey, man, because that same dude done hopped on the, on the flight. He done went down to Cartagena, and he got him a bad one on his own. He said, a all-you-can-eat buffet. A all-you-can-eat-bad-bitch buffet. How about that? Wow. <laughs> you know? Praise God. Hallelujah. of black women in this day and age, it don't matter. All right, welcome back to the broadcast. Look, man, the link to the chat. Uh, link to come on in is up in here, man. You guys are welcome to come in and chop it up with me if you want to. I've said enough. I've said a lot. I've given you some biblical verses. I've given you some good old-fashioned common sense. Uh, so y'all welcome to come in. But in the meantime, I'm going to read, read my shout-outs to all these good folks who contributed to these cash apps. We only need three more and we'll be at the quota, man. Again, what I'm trying to do is instead of doing this super chat membership thing, 
Remember, Google takes 30% of everything you guys contribute. But if you send it to me via Cash App, it all gets to come to me. And then I'm able to do stuff like these broadcasts. And as you guys see, co-parenting with the Spurlings and the post-production and all that, the stuff that makes black people look good. I would rather do that than allow these this billion-dollar corporation to take more of our money and just basically take advantage of us. And uh, so, you know, that's why I'm, I'm at where I'm at. But um, hell, I think now all I need is two more cash apps. But let me read read these names off. And um, what I'm going to do is, I know some people don't want their real names read, but uh, I'm going to just, you will know who you are. Big shout out to JL. Big shout out to Expansion W. My man, uh, Bougie. Big shout out to Pete. My man, we're going to call him, uh, 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 we're going to call him PK. Shout out to you. My man, Wrench Time. I'm going to just holler your name out. Big shout out to Wrench Turn out of D-Town. Big shout out to, we're going to call him Dave. Big Dave, Big Cody. My man, Deacon Salty Balls. I see your real name on here. I know you don't want nobody to know it. Anyway, shout out to my man. We're going to call him Mr. Reed. Shout out to my man, PJ. Uh, my man, Larry. Ja. Uh, Mr. Patterson. Mr. Aubrey, Mr. Apuku, shout out to Swift, shout out to Julian, shout out to Mr. Freeman, Mr. Braggs. And of course, again, the good deacon is coming through, man. Shout out to you. And my man, we got the quiet storm, Mr. Carter and Mr. Uh, Shay 2882. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all. Again, like I said, if you want to come in, the link is in the chat room. If you ladies want to come in and chop it up with me, look, I know I'm a, I'm a mean man. I know I'm tough and you know but i still talk to you we very respectful over this page you understand what i'm saying so you're welcome to come through but fellas man the link is in the chat room y'all want to come through and chop it up with me but um here's the thing uh again i don't give relationship advice all i'm doing is telling you fellas to be wary of who you take advice from just generally speaking man it's just dangerous taking advice from men who live in the gynocracy. You really should not, uh, you really need to travel first. You really need to get outside the country and see how these men outside the country operate, outside of this Western world. You need you one of them good Nigerian fathers, okay? Everybody should have a, a Nigerian father. If you had a Nigerian father, a lot of the issues that black men in America are dealing with right now, you wouldn't have. You understand what I'm saying? Because I've seen these Nigerian fathers. Where are, my, where are my people from Nigeria? <laughs> Shout out to all the Nigerians. Uh, if you see how they get down, you see how you want to talk about black patriarchy, you really need to check out some of how, how some of these Nigerian men from the continent get down, man. They really it will open your eyes. I got my, uh, I learned a lot in the Dominican Republic. I learned a lot in Colombia. I saw how those men were treated with respect. They command their families. They command their homes. They control their neighborhoods. And as I mentioned earlier, even though you have a situation where a lot of women are born having children out of wedlock, because the men are still in charge, uh, because the men are still in charge, then what does that do? Um, it means that whether or not it, it, whether or not it, it, the children are born out of wedlock, they're still subject to the patriarchy. You see, here in the United States, here in here in the U.S., Black American men specifically, but now generally everybody is subject to the matriarchy. We're subject to the women's rule, and so that's why you have things going the way they're going. But again, the uh, conversation is uh, conversation rules the nation. The link uh, to come on in is in here. If it's too late for y'all, that's cool, baby. It don't matter to me, man. I'll chop it up with you if you want to. But uh, other than that, man, um, I, I just want you guys to just, just think about what we talked about here tonight, okay? Um, you got all these old guys giving advice. And at the end of the day, I think we realize that most of these men are saying these things because it sounds good to women. And as long as you say these things to these women and you make them feel good and you tell them things like, yeah, you know, it's 85% the man does the work and 15% the woman does the work because she can give you a child. Okay, now that's a biological function. 
she did not have to have any talent or do anything extra to get that biological function of being able to reproduce. That does not separate her from 99% of the rest of the breeding age women in the world for her to have children. What else does she bring? You see, and only a simp would tell you something like that and say it publicly. And he really believes that. And I'm talking about Mr. Harvey. He really believes that. And it's just sad and it's a shame. Um, you know, especially considering there's so many people who look, look up to him. A lot of us equate wealth and money with uh, success in all realms. Just because a person's worth $200 million doesn't mean they can run a 4-3 in the 40, right? Just because a person is worth $200 million doesn't mean they can slam dunk a basketball, right? That being said, these are skills that are acquired. Just because a person is worth $200 million, like Steve Harvey, does not mean he's good with women. See, first of all, fellas, you got to understand who you are. You're a child of the most high God. God did not put you on this earth to be subservient to anybody else but him, especially a woman. You are supposed to lead your household with more, be the moral leader of your household. It makes no sense for you to be led by a woman who's leading you astray. I gave you all those different biblical references that you can base it on. So it's not just me saying this. This is our ancient. So whether you believe in the Bible or not, whether you believe it's the word of God like I do, it's still a 2,000-year-old doctrine that has not been proved wrong. These people understood the human condition. And one of the things they addressed was, and if you look at the Bible with your red pill lenses on, you will see that these men were telling you, hey, you got to put God first. You can't be led astray by these women because the minute you are, you leading down, you, you headed to destruction. You see? And this is what I see. But um, anyway, I think we've said enough for tonight. I know you guys uh, are going to have to get used to these late night conversations again. Uh, but uh, we'll be back again soon, man. I'm enjoying this, man. I'm, uh, you see, I'm in, I'm rejuvenated. I've, uh, I've, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little, see me smiling a little bit more. I've been a lot, a lot more physical fitness, a lot more physical activity. For those of you that you guys don't know, I have uh, just accomplished attaining my blue belt in uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So I'm feeling strong. I'm feeling good. Um, for those of you guys who didn't know, I had some high blood pressure issues like a lot of other black men, and I'm working on that with the activity and the physical fitness. And, uh, you know, life is good. I got my, my, son, my youngest son is here. And, uh, you know, life is good, man, and I'm feeling good. but that still does not negate the obligation that I have to you gentlemen. I come to you every night because I love you. I come to you every night because I want to put good vibes and good advice out there so that when that advice is needed, my sons can pick that up from you all. Cause see what you put out in this world will come back to you. And if you put the truth and righteousness out in the world, then that's, what's going to come back to you. I believe that. And so this is what I'm doing. I'm laying seeds for my own children, for my own salvation. So keep that in mind. And that's why I do this. Uh, we got my man Cody Marshall up in here. Cody, what's happening, baby? Talk to me, brother. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> going, man? All right, brother. So, man, we talking, taking advice, taking relationship advice from simps. And, you know, man, I know you're a good old New Orleans boy, man. So you was probably raised in the church or raised around church people like myself. I ain't never heard a pastor talking about how the Lord don't like simps. Now, they'll beat around the bush. You see what I'm saying? But they never really talk about how dangerous simping can be. And we see it playing out in real life with Steve Harvey, man. Just simping, gone wrong. What are your thoughts on this conversation? Well, my thoughts is Marjorie trapped the, the unicorn Mm -hmm. took care of the unicorn mm -hmm. after she took the unicorn she killed the unicorn and cut the horn off can we really be mad at marjorie though no i mean right and, and 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 the reason i say that is because she saw a sucker she played him he played himself 
Because think about what he did. Allegedly, he cheated on his wife, or he cheated on his wife with Marjorie. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, he opened up the door. And then here's another thing. And now it's like his children, from his, his biological children, don't get the treatment that his stepchildren get, who he's adopted. And they're mad about that. But my thing is, what happened to your relationship with your father that some other group of kids or some kids that's not his own could slide in there? And then I had to look at the relationship with the women. These women that gave birth to these children for Steve Harvey, they've been talking bad about him. You understand what I'm saying? And so the children are going to inherit those bad feelings about their daddy, and they're going to be looking at him sideways. <clears throat> so they're not going to give him the respect he deserves. They're not going to give him the love and attention he deserves. <clears throat> so what happens? Some other group of kids do, and there they go. What are your thoughts, bro? Well, you know, it's in, in what you said, you hit the head on a nail just earlier when I was by my father just now on how certain men would basically, once they move on with another woman, that – those kids are out of the picture. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like they didn't moved on to something new. And, and it's crazy how this has really gone on in the community, especially when it comes to having a lot of kids that's being yeah. born out of wedlock. Yeah. You know, they have a lot of resentment of their father because of the mothers uh, being angry and bitter behind it can be behind simple things, you mm -hmm. know. It can be a bunch of factors, you know. Let me let me let me suggest this. I have two boys from my marriage, and I have one child from a relationship that I had about eight years ago. And I'm gonna just tell you, I've had bitter custody issues with both of these women, but I never I always have explained to my children that you belong to me. You see what I'm saying? You are mine. You belong to me. <clears throat> and I don't care what these women say, you will always be mine. And I never allow new women to come in and take their place. Moreover, I'll tell her, I don't date women who have children, you know, not seriously. And the reason I don't is because I can tell her, I can never treat your child the way I treat my own. And that would create animosity in the house. So I don't even try it. And some men will say, well, or some people will say, well, damn, you got kids and you don't want to date women with kids? No, because I'm the breadwinner. I'm the one who calls the shots. I'm the one with the bank accounts and the checkbooks and the credit cards. And I'm not going to do for your kids what I do for my own. And so why even bring that animosity into the household, which is going to create chaos? Now, here's the thing. If I was to date a woman with children, <clears throat> I would definitely not put her children up and above my own children, no matter what the mother says, because that's just the type of man, no matter what my relationship is with, with my children, I'm with, with, with the children's mother, I'm still going, because of who I am and the caliber of person I am, because of my will, I'm not going to treat my kids bad. You see, even if the mama is trying to talk bad about it, you know, we're going we gonna to deal with that. I'm going to see you often. And so you're going to have to tell. See, that's another thing. Don't let these women run you away from your kids. But you got to blame these mothers. That's another you thing. Blame these mothers, too. They saw with the kids to the daddy. And now the kids like, well, forget you. And then now they done ran. He done went off and got some more kids to treat them better who aren't his. And what, what can you do? But anyway, go ahead, bro. What are your thoughts? That's a, that's yeah. that is also another thing where uh, that's going on, and it's like you see it all the time <laughs> in the community, man. And it's crazy how you just hit it on, you you just hit the hammer like right on the nail, man. Like, yeah. it, and it it boggles my mind. It's like they they let a woman manipulate them and say, okay. Such and such. Okay, if your if, if your daughter's maybe eighteen years old, right? If you have an eighteen year old daughter, she need money for school for for her stuff. The wife might, your wife might say, "Well, why she need money? She eighteen. Mm, yeah. Oh, wait, hold on, wait a minute. That's my daughter. Right. 
And then the crazy thing is, if that don't work, they'll say, well, you just trying to please their mama. You need to get back with her. You just trying to stay in good with her. You see what I'm saying? To make it seem like you just trying to, you doing stuff for the other woman kids, your ex-wife kids or your baby mama kids to try to stay in good with her. You see what I mean? So that makes you, so now you got to stop doing stuff for your own kids because your new woman is saying, well, you she's laying, uh, she's putting that on the fact that you're trying to get with your old woman. And so that's manipulation. And see, here's what I'm saying, fellas. Part of being a strong man is knowing when to tell these bitches no. No, bitch, that's not how we going to do things, okay? And excuse my language. No. No. Somebody type no in the chat room and then type hell no in the chat room. When it comes to your kids, fellas, you got to understand that is your biological legacy. That is you. That is your extension into the future. That is your immortality. And you got to see your children as yourself. And when you begin to see them as an extension of yourself, it won't matter what these women do. Look, bro, I spent $50,000 on attorney's fees fighting for my son. And that's just the one lawyer. That's just to the Florida lawyer. We ain't talking about the Jamaican lawyers and the Texas lawyers. You see what I'm saying? And that's how much I'm willing to do to, to protect my seed and ensure that I have uh, 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 a chance to be a father to this boy because I know how important that is. That's my seed. Of course, I want to have a say-so into how I live in the future through my children. You understand what I'm saying, bro? So look, and, and I'm going to tell you something, fellas. If you fight these women hard enough, they don't love them kids like that. Keep fighting them. Keep on fighting them. Spend them. Let them know there's nothing I'm going to do. I'm never going to stop. You're going to be broke fighting with me. It's never going to be over. If I can't afford a lawyer, then guess what? I'm going to be in there representing myself. You know, you see what I'm saying? And once they real, once these women realize that's the type of fight they got to deal with, man, they'll, they'll pretty, they're going to quit. It might take some time, but you keep putting that heat on these women. They don't love these kids like that. They see a lot of these women see these children as a financial opportunity and a come up. And if you will, if you fight them hard enough, and I'm just telling you, and it, it's going to be some dark days and you might shed a few tears and you might start asking yourself why I got to do this. But other than that, you're going to have to deal with what Steve Harvey has to deal with. So you fight these women, man. You fight these women. You get as much custody as you can, much time as you can. And you don't let these women turn you against your children or turn your children against you. And then, then now, uh, now you out here on national TV looking like an idiot because you didn't you didn't marry the 304. Your kids don't like you. You're treating these other kids like they're your kids. You just look ass backwards. You look like a simp. It's destroying his life. That's what I mean. Simping will destroy your life, fellas. All right? Simping will destroy your life. Look at all these simps. Look at Umar Johnson. Life jacked up. Now he's down in Sasua tricking. You see what I mean? Look at, uh, what's his name? Derek Jackson. You know what I'm saying? This wife who was loyal to him, now she done put his business all out in the street. He can't come back from that. Simping. Look at all these. Look at Boyce Watkins. Dude, you just you just look, you look like an idiot. You see what I mean? So it, it, we've never heard these sort of scandals and simpish behavior from people like Farrakhan and Malcolm X. We can't see Boyce Watkins as a Farrakhan. We can't see uh, 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 Umar Johnson as a Mar uh, as a Malcolm X. They look like simps. You can't respect that. And y'all know I'm telling the truth. You understand what I'm saying? But uh, anyway, bro, we almost about two hours in. I think we've said enough. We'll be back tomorrow, man. Thank you guys so much. And I think I had a couple of more people contribute to the cash app. We still didn't get what we was trying to get, but that's all right, man. We we about three short. But big shout out to Mr. Carter and uh, Mr. Shea who came through, man. If y'all appreciate what I'm doing, man, make sure y'all hit the thumbs up button. Show your love that way. Uh, it's always good to have my man Cody Marshall in here, man. I got my my old school guys coming through, man. We doing it different. Y'all go check out the uh, uh, go check out the uh, Blizzard King page. We're gonna be doing. That's where all the replays, are, all that hostility <laughs> that we've been doing for the past ten years. That's where it's gonna be deposited. But uh, anyway, man, God bless you guys. I love you. Thank you so much. Look, man, taking relationship advice from simps 
That's a no-go zone. All that's going to do is lead you to destruction. I said it, and you and you heard, and, and I gave you biblical references where it's happening. You ain't got, if you don't like me, if you don't like me and what I'm saying, fine. Be mad at God, because that's where I got it from. Other than that, this is Uncle D. <laughs>